ادع الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادله بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وسفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول عز من شأنه يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ويقول الله عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم Indeed, all praises are due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we seek His forgiveness. Whomever is guided to Islam, no one can misguide Him, and whomever is misguided, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can guide Him to the truth. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our souls and our evil deeds. And we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam was Allah's final servant and messenger sent to all of mankind. Rawa al-Imam al-Tirmadhi fi sunanihi bi sanadin hassanahu an Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu an al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal At-Tajiru al-Sudduq al-Ameen مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned in an authentic hadith which Imam al-Tirmidhi said is hasan, is fair and good. He said that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that the truthful, the trustworthy merchant or businessman is with the prophets, the truthful. And the martyrs. Brothers and sisters in Islam, from the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us as Muslims, is that He sent to us a final revelation to all of mankind, clarifying everything that we need to know in our worldly affairs and also in the affairs of the hereafter. He didn't leave anything behind, and this is even witnessed by many of his companions, from amongst them Abu Dharr al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, when he said, تَرَكَنَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَمَا طَائِرٌ يُقَلِّبُ جَنَاحِيهِ فِي الْحَوْلِ the great companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Dharr al-Ghifari, he said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us, meaning he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there wasn't even a bird flying in the sky, in the air, except that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to us and increased us in knowledge and enlightened us about it. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on to say, he said, there doesn't remain anything that will get you closer to Jannah or keep you far away from the hellfire, except that I have clarified it to all of you. 
So brothers and sisters, this is from the greatest mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. That He sent the final messenger to all of mankind to clarify everything that we need to know in our worldly affairs and also in the affairs of the hereafter. Everything the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu left behind is from amongst the halal, from amongst the recommended and desirable deeds are all the things that will get us to Jannah. And the things that he mentioned from the haram and the things to stay away from are all the things that will keep us far away from the hellfire. And also, from the beauty of the religion of Islam is that it doesn't just focus and provide guidance for only one or two aspects of human life. Like we might find many other worldly philosophies and religions do. Rather, Islam is comprehensive to all aspects of life. It covers everything and shows you guidance that you need to know for your spiritual needs, for your physical needs, what to eat, what not to eat, who to marry, who not to marry, the mental, what to read, what not to read, the social, who to interact with, who not to interact with, and even the economical, what things you should spend your money upon, which things you should invest in, which things you should avoid, such as riba, and also dealing with haram things. So Islam is comprehensive to every aspect of our lives. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also from the mercy within Islam, is that it, just, it does not teach us just to stay in the masjid all day and make dhikr and read Qur'an and pray, and not to think about our sustenance, our livelihood, and a job or profession or rizq. Nor does it teach us to only go out and work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, without going to the masjid, or without reading Qur'an, or without praying, or making the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, Islam is a balanced way of life to cater to the needs of our mind, the needs of our soul, and the needs of our bodies. So today, brothers and sisters, we are going to speak about some of the manners and etiquettes that a Muslim should have in the workplace, or that a Muslim should have as a Muslim businessman, or an entrepreneur, or a merchant, somebody who buys and sells and trades things. As we know, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he himself was a merchant. He himself was one who used to travel and trade. And also his wife Khadija radiallahu anha was a merchant and one of the great examples of how to be a successful businessman and businesswoman. And many of the great companions, many of those who were promised the paradise from amongst Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Uthman ibn Affan. So when we look in the Sunnah and we look in the Quran, we find that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he taught us and encouraged us the ways of how to do business and also told us the ways that we should avoid and stay away from. He told us that the Muslim should always seek the halal, seek that which is truthful. Be honest in buying and selling and stay away from deception, lying and not being honest when buying, selling or doing business. As we know brothers and sisters, some of the greatest nations in the world to the far east and many nations in Africa, many of them became Muslim not because Islam was forced upon them because of their interactions with the honest, the trustworthy Muslim businessmen who traveled to their lands. So how is it today when many of us, many of our brothers and sisters left our Muslim lands to come here to do business? But unfortunately many of the non-Muslims find the Muslims engaging and many of the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us to do, such as many of the haram things that we're going to talk about in today's khutbah. 
As we all know, the halal, the wholesome provisions, are those that are earned through permissible ways in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did He say? Allah has made it easy for us to acquire and attain sustenance. But He wants us to stay away from the things which are harmful to us, not only in this world, but harmful to us in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't prohibit anything for us, except that it taught us permissible ways of how to earn a living, and the opposite of the haram and how to do things right. Allah forbid fornication, but encouraged us to get married. Allah forbid riba, usury, dealing with interest, but encouraged business and trading without riba. Allah forbid lying, stealing and deceiving, and encouraged honesty, giving charity, and being straightforward. So anyone who reads the Qur'an and ponders over the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, they will find numerous texts that encourage us as Muslims to always seek the halal, the wholesome, pure provisions, free from any doubts, free from any riba, free from any misconceptions or things or concepts that you don't understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Qur'an, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْتِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Allah, He tells us, He says, Allah is the one who's made the different paths and roads and trails through the earth. Why? So that you may travel upon those roads to seek sustenance, to seek provisions, to work and have a profession and job. And to Him is the resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us about the day of Jummah. فَإِذَا قُدِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah, He says, and when the Jummah prayer is over, when it is commenced, what do you do? Do you just sit in the masjid all day? Do you just shit, sit, sit and sleep and read Qur'an and make dhikr all day? No. He ordered us, He says, once the Jummah prayer is over, go out. Disperse throughout the lands and seek the bounties and the provisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many of them as I said were businessmen, many of them were entrepreneurs and merchants. So they always went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask him what is halal, what is haram, what is deception, what is truthful, this and that. So they always inquired about what is the best type of risk, what is the best type of sustenance. So on one occasion, the companion went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu kasbi atiyaw. What sustenance is best? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replied, Amalu rajulu bi yadihi wa kullu bay'in mabroor. He said, the type of earnings and the type of sustenance and rizq that a person earns with his own hands, with his own effort, and every other permissible type of business. So we know as well that many of the prophets were also merchants, were also craftsmen, were also blacksmiths. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they were those Many of the prophets and messengers that the Prophet Muhammad told us were shepherds. So having a job, no matter what it is, as long as it is halal, don't feel humiliated because you don't ha you're not a CEO of a great company or you're not a manager of this, this business or that business. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he told us about the great Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. He said, مَا أَكَلَ أَحَدٌ طَعَامًا قَدْ خَيْرًا مِنْ أَنْ يَأْكُلْ مِنْ عَمَلُ يَدِهِ وَإِنَّ النَّبِيُّ اللَّهِ دَاوُودَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ كَانَ يَأْكُلُ مِنْ عَمَلُ يَدِهِ That no one has ever eaten something better than the food that is eaten from your own efforts, from your own sustenance that you earn through your own job, through your own work, through your own profession, not from begging, not from asking, not from deceiving or cheating people, 
out of their wealth. So brothers and sisters, I know the situation that we're experiencing now. Many of us, we may not have jobs. Many of us, we may be out of work. Many of us, our businesses may have declined. But this is only temporary. If you look, this is the sunnah of life. Businesses go up and businesses go down. Investments increase, investments go down. This is natural. So don't lose hope. I'm, men I'm mentioning this today in the khutbah because with hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the situation better for all Muslims here who are merchants, who are businessmen, for those who are professionals, for those who have jobs, that don't lose hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always make things better. And this is how the Muslim should always be optimistic. So brothers and sisters, working, having a job, having a business, being an entrepreneur, a tajir, buying and selling in Islam is something virtuous. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be humiliated thinking that Unfortunately, you find some people who are religious in the deen, they look down upon businessmen. They say, why don't you come to the masjid? Why don't you stay in the masjid all day with us? Why don't you read Quran all day with us? Yes, this is noble, this is virtuous. But it is also from the main pillars of the deen to go out and seek a halal provisions. And we've heard these types of doubts and misconceptions about business and businessmen and entrepreneurship and buying and selling in Islam. That some individuals who lack knowledge of the deen and who have gone to extremes in the deen in their aestheticism, thinking that they have to abandon the dunya completely, they look down upon other businessmen. They think that their sustenance or their provisions are going to be provided for them by just sitting in the masjid all day, making dhikr, reading Quran, and praying. And that that thing is better to do than going out, working, or getting involved in business or trading and buying and selling. And don't think that this is new, this type of idea. This was even around in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. There were some of the tabi'een and maybe some of the companions who had this same idea, that they can just sit in the masjid all day and be able to take care of their families, be able to attain and acquire provisions. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he advised the Muslims at that time, what did he say? He said, لا يقعد أحدكم عن طلب الرزق ويقول اللهم أرزقني فقد علمتم أن السماء لا تمتر ذهبا ولا فضة He said, none of you should be just sitting, whether it's in your house or in the masjid, trying to seek sustenance saying, Oh Allah, give me rizq. Oh Allah, give me sustenance. And you know that the sky does not rain down gold in silver. And Omar radiallahu anhu, he also said that he heard the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ لَا رَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرَزَقُ الطَّيْرَ تَغْدُوا تِخِبَاسًا وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانًا The Prophet, he advised them, those who had that idea where we just sit in the masjid all day and make dhikr and then our bills are going to get paid. He said, if you were to put your true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you should, then you would be given provisions and sustenance just like the birds. When the birds go out in the morning, they go out hungry. And in the evening, they come back with the food for their young chicks with their bellies full in the evening. So if the birds can put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for them rizq, and not just sit in their nest all day, waking, waiting for worms to fall down in their nest to feed their children. What about us, brothers and sisters in Islam? And another great companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said, إِنِّي لَا أَكْرَهْ أَنْ أَرَىٰ أَرَّجُ فَارِغًا لَا فِي أَمْرُ الدُّنْيَاهُ وَلَا فِي أَمْرُ آخِرَتُهُ He said, I dislike to see a man who is idle, who is not doing nothing, he is just sitting, not doing anything. Nothing to benefit his worldly life, nor anything to benefit his hereafter. And it was also said to one of the great Imams, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, somebody came to him questioning him. He said, O oh, Imam, what do you say about the individual who just sits in his house or the masjid all day and says, 
I am not going to work or do anything until my provisions come to me. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he replied, this individual is ignorant and he has little or no knowledge of the deen. So brothers and sisters in Islam, we know that Islam encourages us to be active, to work. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, even if you have a seedling, even if you have a seedling, then you should plant it before you die. So we know that Islam encourages us to do halal business and work and be active. And as men, my brothers in Islam, who are responsible for maintaining our households, as the Prophet Muhammad told us, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْعُولٌ أَنْ رَعِيَتِي He says, all of you are shepherds, and all of you will be held accountable for your flock. The man is responsible for his household and will be asked and held accountable about his flock. The man is responsible for spending upon his wives, his children, taking care of the bills, taking care of all of the needs of those members in his household. The woman is not responsible for one penny. This is the qawama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the men. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاء That the men are the maintainers of the women. The women are not the maintainers of the men. So as men, as I said, we are responsible for maintaining our households and taking care of our children and our wives. And this is mandatory. This is an obligation upon the men. That if you do not take care of your family, then we are sinning. As men, we are at fault as men. If we think that our women or our daughters are going to go out and earn a sustenance and take care of our families, then we need to change this understanding and get it back to the understanding which is in accordance with the Quran and with the Sunnah. And also, brothers and sisters, as we all know, that our sustenance and earnings here in this worldly life has nothing or little to do with the degrees that we have or our experience that we have, or our intelligence that we may think we have. Look around the world today. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, many of the millionaires, billionaires. How many billionaires do you see throughout the world who don't even have anything except a high school diploma? And how many PhD holders do you find who are unemployed, poor, or in poverty? Of course, seeking an education is something praiseworthy. But just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives someone sustenance or gives someone more wealth than you, this doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that individual. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth to those whom He loves and those whom He doesn't love. It is a test. What are you going to do with this wealth? Are you going to spend it in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful by giving sadaqah and paying your zakat and giving charity? Or are you going to use it to spread corruption and spread mischief upon the earth? So sustenance, brothers and sisters, is something that is decreed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was decreed before we were even born. How much risk, how much provisions, how much sustenance, how many millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars you're going to acquire while, our, while we are here on this short time on this earth. But always remember, brothers and sisters, that risk, sustenance, it doesn't only come in the form of wealth. It can come in the form of righteous children. It can come in the form of a righteous wife, a righteous husband. It can come in the form of a good masjid with good brothers who help you and support you. So don't let our understandings of sustenance and risk be restricted only to coins and dollars and money and investments that we may have in our bank accounts. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in halal sustenance in this world and the next.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, today we're talking about Muslim ethics, business ethics. How a Muslim businessman or entrepreneur or professional or somebody who has a job, how they should act with their fellow employees or the people that they interact with and also with people in general. So what are some other tips that our great religion of Islam teaches us about how to be successful Muslim businessmen or how to be successful professionals or have successful jobs in trading or service businesses or any other type of businesses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us and made permissible for us to do. Number one, after putting our trust in Allah, our tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then putting forth sincere efforts, it is having a good intention. The Muslim businessman, the Muslim entrepreneur, the Muslim trader, he must always have a pure and clean and good intention of wanting to make himself free of the need of anybody else from amongst the creation. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man, the meaning of the hadith is that whoever seeks independence from everybody and only seeks sustenance from Allah, then Allah will make him independent from the need of anybody else. He won't have to ask anybody else for money. He won't have to ask anybody else for a loan. He won't have to ask anybody else to aid him or anything like this in regards to wealth. So the first one to ask is who? Ar-Razzaq. The one in whose hand is all of the sustenance in the heavens and the earth. Number two, for those youth or those brothers who want to engage on a, a business project or are involved in business, you have to be brave. You have to try to implement your plan and be ambitious and courageous and not afraid to lose or fail. Because the only way that you're going to learn from your mistakes is after failing. You try it once, it doesn't work. Try it twice, it doesn't work. Try it three times, this recipe wasn't good. Try a new recipe. Add salt, add pepper, add uh, turmeric, add this. Maybe you're a driver, right? This route didn't work. Let me take 95 this time, right? You learn from your failures. Don't let the failure be a means for you to leave off and abandon your project or your entrepreneurship or your seek to be a trader or things like this. Number three. Is understanding and comprehending the type of business or trading that you want to get involved in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first verse that He revealed to the Prophet Muhammad was what? Iqra, read. Read, research, look around you, observe, consult other people who are involved in it. Number four, taking the permissible Islamic means. You may have a permissible idea. I want to sell halal meat, for example. But you allow, for example, non-Muslims to slaughter for you. Or you want to sell halal goats, older goats, two years old, three years old, and say that they're young goats, so you can increase the price. Yes, selling goats is permissible, but it's what you join it with which may make it impermissible, or makruh, or something which is haram or considered deceiving and lying. So after taking the permissible means, the actions, always take consultation, number one, with your Muslim brothers who will maybe be in the same field. And also, maybe non-Muslims who are in the same field as well, to gain their experience, to gain their know-how. And lastly, but not leastly, pray istikhara to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any project, any type of business or entrepreneurship you want to engage in, if you don't know if this will succeed or not, come make two rakats to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask Him to guide you and to say that if it is good Allah, guide me to it and make it easy for me. But if it is bad for me, take it away from me and remove it from my heart. Also brothers and sisters, number five, some from the tips that we give the Muslim entrepreneurs and businessmen is to always have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and consciousness of Him. As a businessman, it needs to be at a higher level. 
Because now you're dealing with wealth. You're dealing with other people's earned, hard-earned money and earnings. You're dealing with other individuals. Now you have a reputation which may carry on to other people or other entities. Always fear Allah and be consciousness of Him. Just like when you're at your place of work and you have a supervisor over you. There's certain things you don't do when the supervisor comes around, right? You may be a little lax, right? Maybe you, you're an IT professional. You're sitting on the computer. You're supposed to be doing networking and things like this, but you go to Facebook. But as soon as you see your supervisor coming in, you close the page and you go back. Or you're at a restaurant. You're supposed to be... Uh, cleaning the tables or washing the dishes, but you're in the back room using your phone. But as soon as your supervisor comes in, you get back to work and you go wash the dishes. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah, He's always watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees who's selling halal, who's selling haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to have barakah, blessings in our wealth. This is why He avoid, tells us to avoid the haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ He says, if the townspeople, if the people who live in the village, if the residents of that place truly believed in Allah and truly feared Him, then He would have opened up the heavens and the earth and poured upon them abundant blessings and abundant provisions and sustenance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مَنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ He gives us the key, He gives us the formula to how to increase our earnings, to how to get out of this deficit, to how to get back to earning more money, to be able to pay our employees or pay our rent, or to be able to pay uh, you know, take care of our families and things like this. He said the key is what? Taqwa. He says whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will what? Make a way out for him. And not only will he make a way out for him of that hardship, which all of us may be experiencing now, but he will give him earnings and sustenance from ways that he can't even imagine. The earnings will come from a business on the other side of the world. Oh, I saw your website. The business will come from this individual who you thought was your competitor, but now he wants you to take over his business and things like this. This is the solution to increase our earnings. Not only, number one, when we have the taqwa of Allah, we're increasing our earnings in the hereafter. But also we increase our earnings here in this dunya. Number six, brothers and sisters, is avoiding all types of buying, selling, trading, and business transactions that contain anything that go against Islam. Avoid deception. Avoid lying. Avoid stealing and the likes. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَمَنْ يَأْخُذْ مَالًا بِحَقِّهِ يُبَارِكْ لَهُ فِيهِ وَمَنْ أَخَذَ مَالًا بِغَيْرِ حَقِّهِ فَمِذَلَهُ كَمَذَلَ الَّذِي يَأْكُلْ وَلَا يَشْبَعْ He said, he who accepts wealth or money justly and rightly, then Allah puts blessing in it for him. But he who takes wealth wrongfully and unjustly and based upon lying and deception, then that individual is like one who keeps eating, but he never gets full. One who keeps earning, but he always loses money. One who has earned so much money, but you don't see it in his venture or his project or any of his investments and things like this. All of it goes away, all of the barakah. You find that his car is always breaking down. His business got burnt down. People are stoning his store and things like that. Why is that? These are from the lack of barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from buying and selling. And that's what is intended by the one who constantly, who lies in buying and selling. It's like the one who eats pizza, eats 10 pizzas, but he's not full. Why? Because Allah has taken out the barakah from that wealth. Also, brothers and sisters, number seven, the tips and advices and recommendations to the Muslim businessmen and entrepreneurs is being satisfied and content with a little bit at a time of halal profits. As they say, قَلِيلُ الدَّائِمْ خَيْرُ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ أَحْيَانًا أو كَمَا قِيلٍ 
that a little a continuous, frequent, regular earnings which are low are better than a lot of earnings which come not regularly. So be content and satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you from rizq. And don't pay attention to how much other merchants are making. Competition. Right? Try to compete with them. Or monopolize the market in impermissible ways. I'm going to go pay this guy to go burn down that business over there. So I am the only halal store here in, in this place. Or I'm going to send the USDA inspectors to that halal, halal slaughterhouse and say that they're dirty and they have non-Muslim slaughtering so it gets closed down so I get more profits at my place. Also, brothers and sisters, number eight, organizing and having extensive supervision and knowledge of one's debits and credits, which is basic accounting information. Budgets, expenditures, right? How much certain projects cost and things like this. This is all within the boundaries, all within the folds and teachings that we find within the Quran and the Sunnah. And number nine, honesty, truthfulness when buying, selling, and trading while giving sincere advice and consultation between the buyer and the seller. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-bay'ani bil khiyar, ma lam yatafarraqa, fa'in saddaqa wa bayyana burika lahuma fi bay'ihima, wa in katama wa kathaba muhiqat barakatu bay'ihima. He said, both parties in a business transaction have a right to annul it as long as they have not separated the place in which they are sitting down trying to agree upon the business transaction. And if those two parties, if they tell the truth, and they make everything clear in their business talk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them and put blessing in their wealth. But if they conceal something in that sitting between the two parties, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the blessings and they will be blotted out from the business transaction. Also, brothers and sisters, from amongst the tips, is paying the obligatory zakat. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many of the Arabs, many of the Bedouins, they apostated from Islam. They're saying, we're not paying zakat anymore. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. There's no need for it. Who stood up and said, no, you're going to pay that zakat. Just how you paid the zakat in the time of the Prophet Muhammad you're going to pay it now. Because zakat is the brother or the sister of what? Prayer. It's one of the second. It's one of the pillars of Islam. If you don't pay zakat and you are eligible to pay zakat, then you're in trouble, brothers and sisters. Paying zakat is one of the pillars of Islam that many of us overlook. Many of us forget about. And many of us forget as to why do we pay zakat. We pay zakat for our own benefit. And also for the benefit of our Muslim brothers and sisters. Paying zakat is a means to purify ourselves. To purify our wealth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَسَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ السَّمِيرٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah, he says, take from them, take from the companions a portion of their wealth. Didn't say all their wealth. We don't have tithing like some of the other religions do where you pay 10% of your earnings monthly. We pay 2.5% of your savings that you've had in your account for a year. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Number 11. Putting some of one's profits that you make in your business or your venture away for voluntary charity, sadaqah, which is one of the main causes for barakah being continued in your business and a means for it to grow and prosper. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he mentioned in a beautiful story. He said there was an individual one time who was wandering or was walking through the wilderness and desert and he heard a voice from the heavens saying to him, go to the land of this person and irrigate it. So he started going there and heading in that direction. 
And after that, the clouds started following him and slinked aside and poured water on an area which had a lot of rocks and was stony ground. And it filled a valleyway or a channel amongst the channels of the land. And that person that needed water who Allah told that individual to go see, he found a person standing in the garden busy in changing the course of the water with the help of a hatchet. So he said to him, servant of Allah, what is your name? He said, my name is so and so. And it was that very name which he had heard from the clouds. He said, oh Fulan, go to the garden of Fulan and head in that direction. And the man asked him, he says, servant of Allah, why do you ask me my name? He said, I heard a voice from the clouds, of which the clouds are now sending down abundant rain, saying, water the garden of so and so, like your name. What do you do for the favor shown to you by Allah in this matter? He said, now I will tell you. He said, so think about it now. This man was wandering and the clouds said, go to the garden of, of that person. And then when he got to the garden, it started raining down upon the person's garden. So then the individual looked at him and he says, how did you, what made this cloud come with you and come and, 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 and water this garden that I had when I was in need of this water for so long? He says, I'm going to tell you what I used to do. He said, I look what I yield from the garden. And I give one third as charity. And I take one third of the provisions for me and my family. And then I return one third to my garden to invest in it. So from this hadith right here, we have a business plan of how to invest your money. Take one third for yourself. Give one third for your family. And then invest what? Invest a third back into your business. So lastly, but not leastly, brothers and sisters, we also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as He encourages us to do business in a halal way, He also discourages us and prohibits us from doing business in haram ways. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil batil. He said, Oh, you believe, do not consume each other's wealth based upon falsehood, based upon cheating, deceiving, lying, false advertising all fall into this category. We know as Muslims that cheaters, liars, deceivers, that they will never last forever. And they are eventually exposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even other people. As it came in an authentic hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marra ala subra ta'amin fa'adkhala yadahu fiha fa'nalat asabi'uhu balalan فَقَالَ مَا هَذَا يَا صَاحِبِ الطَّعَامِ قَالَ أَصَابَتْهُ السَّمَاءِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ أَفَلَا جَعَلْتَهُ فَوْقَ الطَّعَامِ كَيْ يَرَاهُ النَّاسِ مَنْ غَشَّ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي On one occasion, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came upon one of the merchants who had a heap of grain or a bag of grain. And when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went to it, he put his fingers into the grain. And he felt that some of the grain underneath was damp, it was wet. So we asked the owner of the grain, he says, what happened? Why is the grain underneath wet, but the grain on top isn't wet? So then the merchant, he told him, he said, some rain fell upon it, and I put the dry grain on top of the wet grain. So the prophet asked him, he says, why didn't you put the damp part on top of the grain so that people might see it and know? And then the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he admonished him and he said, he who deceives us, he who cheats us, then he is not from me. He is not from amongst my ummah. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu freed himself from those who cheat or deceive others in business. Giving people old or outdated food or products. Giving people fake or false medication that don't need it. Claiming that people need a certain type of service when they really do not need it. Selling old goats or sheep or cows as if they're young animals to get more money. All of these brothers and sisters fall into this category of these hadith, these ayat that we're talking. How many of us, as Muslim businessmen or merchants, cheat others in their businesses here in the United States or anywhere out the, throughout the world? All the businessmen and all the merchants should be reminded. And that's the purpose of the khutbah, 
to remind us. فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That whatever earnings we've acquired from lying, from cheating, from haram, from deception, that all of that wealth that we acquired from haram, it's going to be our provisions or that individual's provisions in the hellfire. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from such provisions. As it came in an authentic hadith, في حديث رفاع رضي الله عنه أنه خرج مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المصلى فرأى الناس يتبايعون فقال يا معشر التجار فاستجابوا لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ورفعوا أعناقهم وأبصارهم إليه فقال إن التجار يبعثون يوم القيامة فجارا إلا من اتق الله وبر وصدق one of the companions went to see the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the masjid. And he saw the people doing business. So he said, O oh, people of trade, O oh, you merchants, O oh, you businessmen in the markets. And they all looked back to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they turned their heads and their necks and they gazed at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with big eyes. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he admonished them and told them, he said, indeed the merchants and the businessmen will be resurrected on the day of judgment as with the wicked. Except for those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who behave charitably, honestly and truthful in their buying and selling. So, hasabu anfusakum kabran tu hasabu ayyuhal mu'minun. Take account of yourselves before we are all taken account of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just how we have accountants in our business who take account of the debits and credits and expenses and profits and things like this. Take account of how much halal things you're selling, how many halal things you're doing and keep doing them and how many haram things we have fallen into, how many haram products we're selling and seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek tawbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a firm determination to never go back to those things again. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه هو فرعين روما عز الإسلام والمسلمين روما عز الإسلام والمسلمين روما عز الإسلام والمسلمين واحد سفوف المسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة